all right so let me quickly talk about like some of the biggest challenges in the ride share industry if you're on boat you're on uber you're on the ride share platform this is perhaps some of the biggest challenges you'll be facing in the business okay first and foremost is the maintenance of the car all right that is a constant even if you're not on boat you will definitely need maintenance at the moment you're fixing one thing just suspect that something else is going to spoil mm? so like you just you, you have to be ready for it <laughs> it's the one moment your tires are good the next moment they are jumping your tire your, your your car is dancing like what is going on now but this thing was right that's the kind of problems that come up and by the way for people who who might may not know i you should always run servicing after at least okay let me say at most five thousand miles whenever you go for servicing make sure they reset your miles reading okay and then make sure it doesn't cross five thousand just so that your engine is sound more preferably more advice at, at well, more <laughs> more preferably i think you should do it after 3000 or 3500 miles in order to keep your engine in good health because if you're driving a mechanical vehicle right the engine is everything as long as that engine is in good health everything falls into place not everything everything but most things most things mechanical like your ac is working your alternator will be working your battery is not going to swell and start doing some kind of weird things okay but a bad battery is a bad battery so i'm just saying like everything mechanical will be functioning right as long as your engine is right so make sure you do the servicing at this um times i just mentioned so maintenance of vehicle is one of the biggest issue because you're driving this vehicle day in day out much more than a normal person who is just driving to work and back okay so definitely the maintenance is one of the biggest challenges and the major challenges in uh, ride share business the next is the vios and the road safety the demons in uniform prefer police to them in my opinion i rather deal with a policeman than deal with those guys really okay because i i don't understand this okay you catch a person you say they don't have spare the, their cars are moving the tires are fine engine is fine it, the car is not smoking right you you say they don't have spare or uh your, your tires are worn out yeah now they take you to the office and then you pay a fine that is big enough to almost if not completely buy a new tire for the vehicle that you say don't have the spare or don't or, or have a worn out tires i don't get the the, the sense in that why would you just leave the money with me? Let me just get the spare. I don't know. Okay, here's what I feel, right? We are always going on this punitive attitude. It, it's almost like everybody wants to punish somebody. It's a spare tire. For the love of God. Look, if I was on the road, let me explain this like this. If I was on the road and one of my tire busted, my my guy i'm not going to cause traffic because my tire is busted i will still drive that car to the sidewalk or to the service lane before i fix it I, it will never cause any hold up how does me not having spare tire affect you or affect society it's it it really boils me like what is this nonsense let me talk about uh what's it called now um extinguisher Extinguisher is good. I'm not saying it's not good. It's definitely good. Okay? But when you say, okay, you don't have extinguisher, come to my office and pay a fine of maybe 7000 or something, and then still leave without an extinguisher, and then tomorrow again I'll catch you and still collect the same fine. What the hell is all this nonsense? 
if my car was to catch fire on the highway, on the road, wherever, okay, we are Nigerians for God's sakes, okay, even if I don't stop, my neighbor is going to stop and help you, that's just the way it is, somebody will stop and help you, if a fire goes out of, out of hand, it's just because it could not have been quenched or helped with the fire extinguisher, the moment any small fire just sparks in a car like this, you just see people run to, if it's sand, they will pour on it. If it's water, if it's anything, they will. It's not because you have a extinguisher. That's why your car is not going to burn down completely. Bros, I'm, again, 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 okay? I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it's definitely, definitely important to have these things. But why punish me because I don't have it? If my car burns down, has it affected you? Do you get? Okay, maybe maybe I'll cause traffic because the car burns on the road. Maybe. Again, I'm saying if there are people passing through that road and the car is burning, definitely they will help you put it out before it burns down completely. The whole point here is that it doesn't make sense to me. That you're punishing a person for not taking precaution for his own safety. If you come to my house and I don't have a fire extinguisher or a, a fire escape, right? How was how is it concerning you? It's like it's like punishing me for what for not taking care of my own self. I, I don't fucking understand it. It's really annoying. The other day, one taxi man was telling me, okay, that the VIUs caught him and then they took 12,000 from him. Now, I don't know if you know how taxis look like in Abuja. I think it's a general thing, right? Most of the taxi vehicles, they are not the most sound looking vehicles, right? They have all scratches and, and they are torn, they are accidented and all that. A person who is driving a taxi, I don't mean to shade taxi people. I don't mean to say it's a, a, I undermine the job or anything, okay? But a person who is driving a taxi, okay? It's just, he's just looking to make ends meet. Some of them are even paying like, like the, the car is on rental. So they have to reimburse or, or, or give a, a kickback to whoever gave them the car. And now they get on the road and you're telling them you don't have triangle. What the hell is wrong with you? This taxi man actually told me that they said his tires were worn. Now his tires were not actually worn. It's I don't know if you know this, where the bushing of your car is bad. So the alignment of your tires changes. And so one side of the tire begins to eat up more than the other side. But generally the tire is not bad. Because if you look at it, the actual measurement of a tire that is bad is to see that the lines that cuts across it in the middle, if it's no longer deep, that's when you say a tire is worn out. If it's no longer deep, if it's become almost smooth. But they don't take this into consideration. The bushing was bad, not the tires. Because now what this man could just do is just to go to a vulcanizer and then tell him to twist the tire the other way. And that's it. His tire is back to new. And in their eyes, it's like, yes, your tire is very much proper and all that. It's like, no, that's not what you should have used to check in the first place. That's not how you check a tire that is worn. This man said he paid 12000 He could have bought two new or fairly used or Belgium, whatever they call it, tires for the car. He's a taxi man. You think he has 12000 to throw away to you guys? It's just, uh, sorry, I, I, um, just come back to the video. I've forgotten what we're talking about. Uh, yeah, the the VIUs are the, the VIUs in the road. I don't even know why they have both of them. You have VIUs, you have road safety, and then both of them are doing exactly the same thing. Why? On one particular road, I I used to see. Here you see VIO, you go forward on the other side of the road, there's a road safety. So if you escape them here, they're still going to get you in front. One way or the other, they're like just wolves looking to just extort you of something. You don't realize the VIOs, I don't know how true this is, but 
I hear that they actually uh, they actually uh, raise their own revenue. So they pay themselves from all of these things they do. And that's why somebody told me that towards the end of the month, you always find that they are very much active because they are trying to gather as much before the beginning of the month. So they'll, I mean, they'll settle themselves salary-wise. One time a VIU person caught me and on the slip that she gave to them or submitted to the office, as per my offenses and all that, she wrote Echoas B. I came to realize later that the Echoas B was a nickname in order to tell whoever she has given the, the form to that it was her who caught me and so a kickback goes to her. A portion of whatever I'm going to be paying goes back to her or it registers as though, yeah, she has caught somebody today. So do you understand? These people actually go out on the road with the intent and with the vision to definitely catch somebody. And that's why, funny enough, you'll find some people who say, just have your papers, just have your license, just have your triangle. They're not going to disturb. Shut up. No disrespect, but shut up. Okay? Because if these people really mean to catch you, my God, they will catch you. Do you know I met one that was actually checking my brake light if they were walking? That was the very first time. She really did mean to catch me. I was like, my dad, when did we start checking brake light? If it's about brake light, I don't think, I think like, you know, like one third of all the cars, even the flashy ones should be off the road. Because it's like maybe two of the brake lights are working, one is not working, or one is working, two is not working, sometimes none is working. Many cars have problems with brake light, but now you're checking brake lights. It's like, ah, she really meant to, she checked my tires. They were okay. There was a spare. There was an extinguisher. There was triangle. And now it's like brake light. Next, they will check fog light. And then, and then headlamp and all that. It's so terrible, man. Come on. Why don't, okay, instead of taking the money from me, yeah? Why not give me the item that you say I'm... Uh, deficient of or I don't have and then perhaps let me let, let let it be that the money I paid to you actually got me something so that you don't catch me tomorrow again what is all this oh if you want to put me on a payment plan for somebody who doesn't have the capacity to pay once right so they can be paying small small that's also there but you take as much as seven thousand from a person uh five thousand and the rest and Tomorrow again, this person still doesn't have it because you just took the money that they were ever supposed to maybe have added up and used to buy. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is like the second point in the biggest challenges in ride share business. It has to be the VI. I think I'm too, I'm too invested in this subject matter. I think it's so annoying. I mean, the other day, I was coming back and I saw a woman. It was around 4, 4.30. She was just there begging like, oh God, please, 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 please. You know, it's a woman. She probably have kids at home. She needs to get back to. She needs to probably make dinner for her family. And you decided to sit on her issue. For God's sake, this woman is not a criminal. It's not like she stole a car. She just, she forgot to do registration. Are you looking for a stolen car and then that's... The, she forgot to do registration. Most women don't do it. To be honest, I'm not uh, saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just what it is. It, they don't really pay attention to things like that. They don't do it. My mom doesn't do it. She never does it. They always catch her. <laughs> Sorry. But that's just what it is. The point is that it's not a stolen vehicle. This person had an oversight... Where they're supposed to have renewed, but they forgot. It's probably like uh, uh, maybe a day old or maybe one week that it has just expired. And now you're trying to punish the person. Again, the people who are trying to punish these people, right? It's not like they even have a car of their own. So they understand what it takes to maintain a car and have all these things. 
sorry, sorry. I have to move on. This is okay. Yeah. So that's it about the VR using the road safety is really just a bane in our flesh. Okay. So as long as as long as you have your your registration, your driver's license, your tires are not worn out. You have your spare, your triangle, and your fire extinguisher. Make sure it's not expired too. That's also an issue, right? So make sure you have all that. So do this, okay? I've talked about this before in a previous video, but do this as sometimes it helps a lot. Whenever they stop you, never park. Don't ever be a good citizen with these people. I don't mean to spread violence, but don't park properly. Stay on the road. You get if they say stop and they're putting their hands like you should go to the to the to your right hand side, don't go there. Park, don't run. <laughs> That's more stupid. Park, but be on the road. Make sure you're disrupting traffic. When they come, or rather, as you you're parking like that, whip out your paper, your uh, vehicle registration and your license, and then show it to them. They're going to dismiss you quicker. Because they know you're disrupting traffic. If you park well, they are going to check heaven and act. Don't park well. Please, that's your take home from this. Alright? Moving on. The next biggest challenges with the rideshare business has to be the union. Although, uh, I, think, I think the union guys will often be a problem for anybody who is still new in the in the business but if you've you know if you've mastered the business and you know what to do and what not to do you know where the union guys are i have a video on that too and uh, you can check it out i think i'll leave a card or something so uh those are those are issues but they are not like everywhere they're not super saturated every single place you go to all right, but you really have to be careful. I mentioned the places where you can find this union. So by all means, if you want to know more about it, please, please check out that video. I don't want to make this one extremely long by going over it again. Okay. Uh, I think these are the three major challenges, if I'm not mistaken. Apart from these, I believe that uh, you can you'll have a very smooth business. All right. So, yeah, that's it. Um, oh. Okay, so this is just an additional um, something. I think I'm more calm now so I can talk about, <laughs> about this part. So, I don't think that the activities of, like, the VIUs or the road safeties are generally terrible, okay? It's just that some things, uh, I, I would hope, I hope that, you know, things are not being held more as a, punishment more than it should be more informative you know like if a person doesn't have a particular thing in their car it's just try and see how you can help them get it instead of just taking penalties and penalties and penalties uh it doesn't help okay really doesn't help and um perhaps introduce the ticketing system because one of the most annoying thing i think that happens with these people is you just coming into my vehicle without my consent without my permission and now you want me to go your direction is basically like being kidnapped okay i think that's that's a very huge violation nobody came out to pick up a vi or a safety agent to take them to the office or whatever that's that's just wrong introduce your ticketing system all right in case a person doesn't have their licenses or whatever it gives you something else and don't make your 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 fees exorbitant all right try and be mellow with these things the 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 idea here is that somebody who is probably driving a car looking for and meat is just doing that right so don't be a frustration to an already frustrated human being and also if in truth the VIO generate their revenue internally in that they generate revenue to pay their staff's salary. That, that is a very, very, very terrible thing because there is no way people who generate uh, revenue internally 
are going to go on the road and not find fault with every car that passes because the moment they don't find fault, then where is the revenue coming from? You see, now that's a problem. In case that is true, please, that is very terrible. And I don't even know why I'm talking like anybody's going to hear me. But that's just terrible, basically. I hope it can change if that's the case. And finally, one other thing you should realize about not having your papers up to date is there is one very important document in there which is the third party insurance the third party insurance is meant to protect any other vehicle with which you are involved in an accident with it doesn't protect you it protects that vehicle so your third party insurance is meant to cover for any damages up to one million naira for the other vehicle that you have either collided with or scratched or whatever any accident basically any damage is caused even to uh in terms of injury to the other party third party not you and on the other person if he also has his registration complete his own insurance is meant to cover for you so the insurance the third party insurance is a very very vital thing that's why your vehicle papers must be up to date at every point in time although there are some speculations about how some of these insurance are actually just fraudulent they are not proper insurance is the one that the vios give to us but i'll expatiate more on that later so but for now that's just uh, just i have to give and uh, i'll see you next video okay bye bye